Hi there, it's Jeff here with a video looking at the important distinction between normal and super normal profit. Now here's a good example of uh, mega profit businesses. These were the leading companies globally in 2023 measured by their pre-tax profit. Saudi Aramco up there right at the top making a profit of, well, just under $250 billion. And then a lot of the leading contenders, they would be probably recognisable, Apple, Microsoft, Alphabet, all the way down to uh, Shell and uh, BP. So clearly software, banking, oil and gas, uh, these global companies making huge profits. Another way of expressing profitability is to look at the most profitable industries in terms of percentage rate of return on capital employed. This is a survey that came out looking at the, just the United States in 2024, the turn of last year. Um, banking, again, oil and gas, transportation, software, investment, utilities. So these kind of industries making high rates of return on average. Banks making profits of just under or just over 30 percent and uh, all the way down to semiconductors making profits of 15, 16, nearly 20 percent. So these are industries which were highly profitable. Good example in the UK is next. <clears throat> the reason for showing you this chart is uh, the rise of online profits in businesses such as Next. They're doing a lot of advertising at the moment in the run up to Christmas. Uh, the blue line shows the profits from their retail stores, including those in um, shopping centres and retail parks. And you can see, obviously, the big hit <clears throat> pardon me, they took in 2021 as a result of the pandemic. But notice the black uh, part of the chart there, the surge continued growth of um, profitability from the online operations. And a good example here of that Next is now essentially dominated by, by online sales. But whilst some businesses make billions of profit, there are many, many businesses, thousands of them that make small profits. So this is the median profit <coughs> made by small and medium sized enterprises or SMEs in the UK from 2019 through to uh, 2023. And this is the quarterly profits. So you multiply by four to get a feel for the annual profit. So for these uh, businesses, the median profit is somewhere between 45 and 50,000 pounds a year. And there are lots of businesses operating on small profit margins, vulnerable to big increases in costs along the way. So <clears throat> this video is about the difference between normal and super normal profit, a really key distinction to make in your exams. So what is normal profit? Well, it's the, the profit earned by a business that is sufficient, just enough to keep it operating, uh, but not so high that it would attract new firms into a market or to an industry. So basically, normal profit in economics refers to the level of profit that allows a firm to cover all its explicit and implicit costs, including the opportunity cost of the resources it employs. We'll work through an example together in a second. The way of thinking about it is that normal profit is basically the minimum return needed to keep a business operating in the long run. Let's take an example that a business has <coughs> pardon me, total revenue, clearly the revenue they get from generating from the sales of goods and services. <coughs> now, the explicit costs are the actual operating costs for a business, the wages they have to pay, the rent, the materials, the energy bills that come in and other direct costs. But there's also something called implicit cost, which includes the opportunity cost of, the, of using the owner's or investor's resources in a business. You see, if I put £50,000 or £100,000 into a business, I'm hoping for a return. I'm hoping to make a profit. But that money could have been used in an alternative way. I could have put it in the housing market or the stock market or put it in a bank. So implicit cost includes the opportunity cost, the return you could have earned in the next best alternative. Now, crucially in economics, implicit cost is assumed to be included in a firm's calculation of average cost. So let's say you're running a bakery and you generate £4,000 a week, £200,000 a year in total revenue from selling your bread and your pastries and your coffees. Let's assume your explicit costs are £120,000, the labour, the rent, the, uh, the, the direct expenses. So you've made £80,000 in accounting profit there, but you've also invested £200,000 of your own money into the business. And we're going to assume the stock market could have given you a 10% return. So whilst you're making an £80,000 profit in accounting terms, 
uh, you could have put uh, the money that you put in the stock market could have earned you twenty thousand uh, pounds, but you chose to invest it in the business. So twenty thousand pounds is the implicit cost, and you need to make at least twenty thousand pounds profit to justify remaining open. So in this sense, <clears throat> your accounting profit will be eighty thousand. Your supernormal profit would be sixty thousand because you have to take into account the opportunity cost of funds invested. So at what output does a firm um, achieve normal profit? Well, there's a, a little circle there on the diagram, P1 and Q1. It's where average cost and average revenue intersect. And at that point, normal profits are made. Price equals cost per unit. And we have included in average cost the implicit cost or the opportunity cost. So normal profit equilibrium is where average cost equals average revenue or price equals cost per unit. And the profit, the normal profit, of course, will vary by industry. It's highly dependent on the specific industry and also the competitive landscape. <clears throat> For example, a highly competitive market with low entry barriers, think retail, think food services, think you know, uh, cafe bars and things, is likely to have a lower normal profit than a less competitive industry with higher barriers to entry, think aerospace or pharmaceuticals. Now, why is normal profit important? Well, if a company is earning below normal, in other words, subnormal profits for a sustained period, it might be a sign that the industry is not as profitable, uh, really, to, to, enough to justify continued investment. <clears throat> so firms making subnormal profit might decide, it's not guaranteed, uh, they could argue that they're making a temporary loss, for example, during the pandemic, but it could be the case that subnormal profits cause some firms to leave or exit the industry. And in bigger companies, companies traded on the stock market, shareholders often focus on maximising their returns and they expect a business to earn profits that exceed normal profit. They're not in it just to make the minimum return. So they may put, might put pressure on management, the agents, to pursue strategies to increase profitability. Might be pressure for mergers and acquisitions or demergers, perhaps, cost cutting, rationalisation or expansion into new markets. And on the flip side, a company that's only making normal profits may be viewed as underperforming by shareholders. That can have a negative effect on the share price and also make it less secure and more vulnerable to a competitive takeover. <clears throat> so normal profit, the minimum profit you need to stay in a market, essentially in the long run. Whereas super normal profit, also known as economic profit or abnormal profit. Well, that's the level of return above and beyond what is needed to cover all your costs, including the opportunity cost, the implicit and the explicit costs. <clears throat> a business is making super normal profit when the price per unit, average revenue, is greater than average cost. And of course, we know that going forward in the long run, the existence and the persistence of those high profits can attract new firms to enter the market, which can lead to increased uh, contestability and reduced profits. So here's our diagram again, and again, a little circle there. When do you maximise supernormal profit? Well, you maximise profits where marginal cost equals marginal revenue. The intersection of the MC and the MR curve shown there, that gives you a, a, an output and a price of P1, assuming each unit sold at the same price. There's our cost per unit, C1. So you find the output, then you draw across some average cost to find the cost per unit. P1 is much higher than C1. They're making a, a level of uh, uh, pri uh, profit here above normal, because don't forget normal profit is included in average cost. So the shaded area there is the total super normal profits at price P1. Now, as we said before, the level of profit you make is dependent on the market structure. This is quite important to know and to be confident about in the run-up to your exams. Typically in perfect competition, you can make any kind of profit in the short run, normal or supernormal, uh, but in the long run, we assume you move towards a normal profit equilibrium because there are no barriers to entry and uh, that drives down the price, the entry of new firms drives down the price towards the normal level. Similarly, in monopolistic competition, we tend towards normal profit in the long run because the entry barriers are low, so you can have short-term profits, but low barriers means the entry of new firms with new products. So perfect competition and monopolistic competition, we move towards a normal profit equilibrium, whereas in oligopoly, supernormal profits can exist 
and persist because of high barriers to entry and if you have a successful collusion. In other words, the businesses in the market can establish market control. And likewise, a monopoly potential there for very high super, supernormal profits because they can prevent, through effective barriers to entry, the entry of new firms. So in this video, we've looked at the difference between normal and supernormal profit. It's a key distinction to make. And then it's uh, really good for your exams to then link it to barriers to entry, if they exist or not, and how high are they. That will have an impact on long run profitability. So in industries like banking and software and engineering and oil and gas, I mean, new firms do come in, but the barriers to entry remain uh, and established scaled businesses can continue to earn very high levels of super normal profit. So I hope you found this uh, revision video useful. Uh, more to come as we head towards our exams. We choose the big topics that really do make a difference in your exams. And if you're confident on these, you'll be in great shape. Take care and see you soon.